them and study the cards themselves. Okay? All right. So, yeah, there's our cards again. Let's just jump through there. Okay, now, the third um, key that I want to mention today is goal setting. So our first key was purpose, the second was structures and strategies, and the third is goal setting. Um, and so there seems to be a correlation in research, in the literature, um, between goal setting and um, academic or educational success, right? So students who set goals um, are better learners, better independent learners. Now, if we uh, all lived in a perfect world and we had highly motivated adult ESL learners and we said to them, why are you studying English? And as they often tell me, I need English for my work. And then we can say, well, what exactly do you need to do in your work in English? And they say, I need to understand emails from my boss, or I need to understand technical manuals because we build airplanes just around the corner and we don't want them to fall out of the sky. Uh, and, and so we basically, students are really motivated. They know their goals and we can take those um, goals and we can turn them into action plans, right? And so we can set, you know, weekly goals, monthly goals, semester goals, whatever they are. So here's my goal, here's your action plan. So I need to understand emails from my boss, so I'm gonna memorize 10 email expressions using this amazing flashcard technique that Mark just showed me. Uh, or I'm gonna do three extra reading activities a week. But if you're working in um, secondary school, high school, and your students are what is sometimes amusingly called tenor students or teaching English for no obvious reasons, it might be more difficult for them to um, to, to articulate their specific goals, right? So in a perfect world, we would get something like this, where students say, oh, my goal is to score B on the next English test, and that would be great. So how can I help you with that? Let's establish some action plans, and they're gonna review their English notes after every class at the weekends, or they're gonna watch a, a series in English with subtitles to consolidate their English, right? That would be great. But most of you that work in secondary and, and high school might tell me that it's not that simple and students will struggle to be able to articulate their goals in that way. Uh, and so we might need to add more structure to this procedure. This is a really lovely example from uh, the teachingenglish.org website, which is the BBC and British Council's uh, language learning website. They have this really simple, really lovely goal setting lesson plan. Um, in which essentially uh, in order to help students um, kind of see or, or make more tangible learning goals, they engage in a reading sequence, uh, first of all. Um, and the text that the students read are essentially a list of goals written by another fictional student. So here in the square in the middle, we have um, Every day I'm going to record myself describing the weather outdoors. Or every week I'm going to write a recipe for a dish that I like. Or every month I'm going to watch a cooking video in English, right? And so the idea is that in order to raise students' awareness of, of goals and, and action plans, the first step is that they essentially read this text and answer two stages of um, comprehension questions. So the first Questions are, what skills are being developed and do you think it would be easy or difficult? And the second one is, which hobbies does the person seem to have, right? So it's essentially a reading activity, but the purpose of reading is to raise awareness of language learning goals. So this will be done in class. And then the second step, having comprehended the text, right, read the text, comprehended the text, the students then use it as a model to write their own language learning goals. And I think that's a really lovely, simple, example of how we can get secondary school students to to set their goals right so uh, check that out on the teachingenglish.org.uk website if you are interested in that okay okie dokie so that was our third goal that was our third key goal setting the fourth key is reflection okay and by reflection I'm thinking of monitoring learning, having set goals, and uh, self-assessment. Now, if you talk to parents or school managers or even students about self-assessment, they might misunderstand the purpose or the goal of self-assessment, right? They might think, oh my God, you want the students to decide if they're gonna pass the course, 
right? You want the students to give themselves an A grade, right? That's obviously not the purpose of self-assessment, right? So all of the stakeholders involved need to understand that self-assessment is really about helping students become better language learners. Now you should remember the writing activity that I showed you at the start of the session where students were gonna write uh, an article about two things that they like about their homes and they were given a careful uh, structure or scaffolding as you were telling me in the chat to to do the task now a, an additional step in this lesson is a self-assessment checklist that the students fill in before they hand in the work and so it asks them to reflect critically on their work here i've started my article in an interesting way i've used an appropriate style i've written the right number of words so on and so forth so this is an example of, of a, a, a direct self-assessment where before students submit the work they fill in this checklist to make sure that it meets the requirements and i mean you can create these yourselves for any piece of work that you set Right? And so uh, we can use very simple direct assessments like that. Another way is to use checklists which are indirect, and this just means that they are about more general language learning behaviors, right? So this one is not related to a specific task. It says, I can evaluate my own language competencies, I can analyze my own needs, I can set myself goals, and the students score themselves on a scale, right? So it's another example of, of self-assessment, okay? This enables students to take some responsibility uh, over their learning process, right? Now, an even, an even more simple way comes from Dylan Williams' fantastic book on um, formative assessment. Uh, and I've seen other uh, books copy this idea. Uh, basically, Dylan Williams proposes a learning log that students do at the end of every lesson where they're given a number of different sentence frames and you could change these or add your own examples as you see fit. Uh, but the basic idea is that at the end of every lesson, students have to complete two of these sentence frames. So today I learned or I was surprised by, right? And so then they start reflecting on their own learning procedure. And what I like particularly about Dylan Williams' list is that not all of them are positive, right? So it can be useful to draw students' attention to um, the negative aspects of, of their learning processes. So one of the examples here is I might have got more, I might have gotten more from this lesson, you know, if I'd paid attention for 45 minutes or whatever it is, right? So students reflect on their learning processes by simply completing these sentences. That's a really easy way of introducing self-assessment. Okay. And another classic technique, uh, is self-transcription. Now this is slightly different to assessing yourself in terms of your performance, but it's a really useful way to, pr to promote noticing and get students to um, pay attention to their, their weaknesses. And so you know, you've probably seen this idea before, but let's imagine that we give students a speaking task to do. So let's imagine that I ask one of my students to um, talk uh, about things that they would pack to go on vacation. Now, this is a classic example of an activity that we could do asynchronously because we don't have enough time for productive language use in online classes. So we can use a tool like Padlet um, or we simply Google Classroom and have students record themselves doing productive activities. And that's great. But as a, a, an added step to promote uh, self-evaluation, we can have students engage in transcription. So they do a recording of themselves doing a, a productive task. They listen back and they transcribe, right? And this draws their attention to grammatical mistakes or lexical mistakes or issues of intonation or tonic syllables or word stress that they might not notice when they're engaged in communication in real time. I was gonna play the recording, but we don't really have time and it's not, not really that valuable. But the basic idea here, I mean, this is a very strong student, but he makes some really interesting mistakes. Like he, does, he doesn't put the S on the word clothes, for example. So rather than me just telling him that, the student's attention is going to be drawn to that mistake by listening to himself and maybe he'll be more likely to notice it and do something about it right so self-transcription is a really simple way of engaging students in self-evaluation okay so self-assessment and monitoring in uh, as part of reflection is key number four okay that we're looking at today 
Key number five is connected to this.